Hi, this is Brian Kim. I want to share with you this case of a patient who was referred to me for a dislocated IOL. And so I performed a lens exchange as well as my modified Yamani technique externalizing the leading haptic for easier trailing haptic fixation. But I used the Sensor IOL, which has very delicate PMMA haptics. And so in order to externalize a haptic atraumatically, I developed this 25 gauge needle docking technique to externalize a leading haptic. And so you're going to be able to see me do this. I did run into trouble a little bit as I was trying to place that needle in and it was a little bit of an awkward angle. So you'll see one small complication that occurs. And so again, this is all learning when you're doing these types of techniques. And so you can see how loose this lens is. It's really fairly deep behind the iris plane, go ahead and mark the limbus and then marking 180 degrees apart using the tip of my 27 gauge cannula. And again, I'm just confirming that I'm 180 degrees apart, which I am. And then I'm gonna go ahead two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus, marking radially, indenting the sclera, and then marking again with the tip of the cannula. This gives a really nice discrete mark and then two millimeters adjacent to this mark. So again, two and a half millimeters with the caliper. Now on the other side, doing the same thing, making a radial indentation from the limbal mark and then inking the tip of the cannula. Gonna go ahead and mark that mark and then two millimeters adjacent. So once I've made my marks, I go ahead and this is an indentation four millimeters poster to the limbus using the trocar. This is a 23 gauge. I tunnel through the sclera and as I tunnel, I rotate 90 degrees and then enter. And when you come out and you see the trocar slightly sideways, that means you have a really nice tunnel. Go ahead and make my incisions. The first two were for the explantation. The third one was for the AC maintainer. The fourth one was for the externalization of the leading haptic. Now all of these other incisions I'm making are for the iris hooks. And so when you have poor visualization, don't be afraid to use iris hooks. So I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber. And then this is a three millimeter keratome blade that I'm gonna to use to place the new IOL and to explant the lens. So I'm placing the iris hooks. This is again, easy to do. You grasp it and then rotate the hook facing down and then the cinch the stopper down. And you just, yeah, you just twirl the stopper so that you can get the hook facing down and then you cinch it. With a lot of practice, these hooks are really not that difficult to do. I place the viscoat cannula through the trocar and I'm injecting some viscoelastic to create some space, pushing any potential vitreous back. And then I'm lifting the lens up. She gave me the wrong forceps, so I switch it out. Go ahead and lift the optic and haptic, grab it with the IOL holder here. And then these are the MST IOL holder and scissor. And as you're cutting, you can actually hold the lens with the right hand with the scissor and then re-grab with the hold on the left hand. So it's kind of a two-handed grabbing technique. Go ahead and grab it with another set of forceps through the main incision, pulling out the first half. making sure that I grasp the second half and then I pull the other haptic out and then I'm able to deliver the lens. I'm able to burp that summerings ring out and then I'm placing the 20 gauge Lewicki AC maintainer. This is intracameral triamcinolone. 
which will highlight any potential vitreous in the entered chamber. Since vitreous is invisible, staining the vitreous with triamcinolone is very helpful to look for any vitreous. Going through the trocar and now doing the anterior vitrectomy. You really want to do a thorough anterior vitrectomy, making sure you remove any vitreous in the anterior vitreous space anywhere that you're going to have the lens and the haptics. Another reason why it's really helpful to have iris hooks in this situation. You can see I'm getting right underneath the iris there, making sure I'm doing vitrectomy right below where I'm going to be placing my scleral needles. So I'm going to bend my needle. This is the right needle. I'm bending about nine millimeters from the tip, making sure the bevel is going to be facing the approach of the haptic. And this is the left side needle bending at the hub. So I'm going to start to load the lens myself. This is the Sensar, j, j Sensar lens. I'm putting it in according to the configuration of the cartridge using the angled McPherson's as I'm pushing the edges together. I'm able to make sure that the optic is cinched down and then you want to make sure the leading haptic is pointed into the barrel. That's the key. If you don't, it's going to crimp on itself and be damaged. So you close the cartridge and then you place it into the injector and you're ready to go. So I'm placing the 25 gauge needle through the contralateral limbal incision, but I'm noticing it's a quite an awkward angle. And as I come out, unfortunately, because it's such a tight space, uh, I was accidentally lifting up and actually cut my incision. And so I'm gonna have to close that incision later. So my solution is to bend that needle so I don't have such an awkward angle with my hand. So I bent the needle up about 70, 80 degrees. Now I have a nice approach, placing the barrel into the eye. My assistant is advancing the lens. You can see the haptic coming out. I make sure the bevel is facing to the right so it faces the approach of the haptic. I'm able to rotate the needle slightly to the left in a counterclockwise configuration. And as I do this, the haptic comes out nicely out of the incision. Now I take over and start to deliver the optic myself, make sure it comes out planar and the trailing haptic comes out swept to the right. Push some more viscoelastic to coat the corneal endothelium. And now this is a 10-0 nylon suture to close that defect there through the cornea that I made earlier. So that was a learning point. So when I'm going to do the 25 gauge docking technique for the leading haptic, I'm going to have to bend that needle. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the eye in the neutral position, tunnel the right side needle to the sclera, tunneling two millimeters and then diving down. You want to make sure you're in the same plane as you dive down. You don't want to rotate too early because you might hit the ciliary body. Very important. You dive down, go straight down, and then you rotate once you've cleared the ciliary body. Do the main incision. I'm using forceps to very carefully dock the trailing haptic on the bevel of the needle. You want to flatten it out, dock it, and then you can advance it. The sensor needle, interestingly, is quite a bit of a tighter fit than the CT Lucille lens, and you can feel a little bit of resistance. But again, this technique is very smooth. There's no corneal stria. You can see the haptic going into the needle very easily and very nicely. And if you dock it on the bevel needle, flatten it out, you can advance it very nicely. And then I disengage the needle from the syringe, making sure that the needle goes down without twisting in a weird way, internalizing the leading haptic, holding the eye in the neutral position, tunneling with the left side needle, two millimeters, diving down. And once I clear the ciliary body, then you rotate it into view. Through the main incision again, I'm gonna grasp the leading haptic now. You wanna grasp it about three millimeters or so from the tip. So because I use a docking technique, I can grasp it, dock it on the bevel of the needle, flatten it out and advance it. So I was able to do that fairly easily. And because there's some more resistance when you're cannulating the haptic through the needle, I feel more confident doing the simultaneous externalization with this maneuver. And so you'll see that as I pull the needles out, you want to make sure you're pulling them in the direction that they came. So on the left side, you're pulling towards you. On the right side, you're pulling away. And as you do this, you can see there's quite a bit of haptic that comes out. 
And so that's the difference between this and the C2 Lucia. Sometimes with the C2 Lucia, it can slip a little bit and it's not as a tight fit. But with the Sensar lens, it's much tighter fit, actually. It's not a problem. It's only a problem if you're pushing and you're not going in and it's because you're not straight and then you damage the haptic. But in this case, if you do it correctly, it actually is quite advantageous because when you pull it out, it doesn't seem to slip back in. So now I'm going to go ahead and push the haptics flush to the sclera. And when you do it that way with a small little bulb, it doesn't cause erosion. It's flat and it tends to be fairly deep it's snug in the sclera. And I haven't really had any problems with erosion of the bulb in any way. At this point, uh, the lens is in great position. So very carefully, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the iris hooks. I like to do this kind of a twisty maneuver because if you do it this way, you're able to preserve the iris hook a little bit more. These are reusable, and but if you yank it out, you can damage the tip. So as you disengage the stopper, as long as you just kind of rotate it 90 degrees, you're able to take the hook out without causing too much damage to the hook. So again, with the Sensar lens, you saw that externalization of the leading haptic is so easy. I don't have to worry about traumatizing it. Docking the leading haptic on a 25 gauge needle as I'm trying to externalize it really has made it a very easy way to get that leading haptic out. If I try to grasp it, it's going to cause damage to the haptic because those haptics are so delicate. And once you damage the haptic, it's very difficult to cannulate the haptic through the needle. And so by doing it this way, using the 25 gauge needle, I'm atraumatically able to just guide the leading haptic out using the 25 gauge needle bevel as a guide and just passively letting it just come out of the eye. And you can see how easy it is to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle, flatten it and advance it. And since, since the leading haptic is outside of the eye, cannulating the trailing haptic is just so much easier. There's minimal corneal stria, corneal distortion. Again, when you're using the C2 Lucille lens, you can really go to town and manipulate it and, and just kind of manhandle it. And just because you can get away with it doesn't necessarily mean that's a good thing. A lot of people like to use the C2 Lucille because it is forgiving. But in my opinion, if you have to manhandle it with your technique, that's probably not the best technique. And so I'm using the Sensar lens really just to illustrate how delicate this technique is. And I have no fear of using the Sensar lens. I have no fear of damaging it. I feel confident when I'm using this technique that I can really cannulate the haptic through the needle confidently using this Sensar lens with a delicate PMMA haptics. So you saw I did the vitrector assisted PI and you saw my setting there. I made a nice small focal PI in the periphery temporally. And then I'm just finishing off what I'm doing here. I'm injecting some intracameral triamcinolone once again. And I have the vitrector through the trocar and I'm pulsing that triamcinolone just to make sure there's no additional vitreous in the anterior chamber. So again, the Sensar lens is just really a great lens. It's non-aspheric, so you don't have to worry about a tilting and anything like that. Um, again, in the past, when you try to use this lens for the Yamani technique, folks really had trouble because the, the movements were so awkward. And uh, when you have the leading haptic cannulated through the needle in the eye, there's a push-pull, there's a tug-of-war effect that occurs. And uh, it's, tried, it's really, really hard to cannulate and straighten out the trailing haptic and make it parallel as it approaches the right side needle. And so because of that, you tend to bend the haptic, break the haptic in the case of the PMMA, and then you have to explant the lens. It's just really not a predictable and safe way to do this surgery. And so by externalizing the leading haptic with a 25 gauge needle as a docking mechanism, you can very carefully and atraumatically guide that uh, needle out. You can see at the end of the case, I'm pulling the trocar out. You know you have a good incision when you pull the trocar out and you massage it and then you activate your irrigation and there's no ballooning of the conjunctiva. And so you know that's a good self-sealed incision. And then I'll take the AC maintainer out and then I'll hydrate my incision. So again, this patient had a dislocated lens and I use the sensor lens with my modified externalization of the leading haptic. And this time, this is a new modification using a 25 gauge needle to dock the leading haptic on the bevel of the needle 
as the lens is delivered, you can very carefully and atraumatically guide that haptic out of the eye, and then you can go after the trailing haptic much more easily because the leading haptic is outside of the eye, and it allows the lens to be pushed upward, and you have much easier access to the right side needle and cannulating that haptic. Because the sensor lens and the PMMA haptics have the, a little bit of a material that's more sticky, um, it is able to hold on to the needle. And so once you cannulate both sides, it tends to grip onto the needle nicely. So when you externalize the needles, I haven't noticed any trouble or worry about the haptic slipping back into the eye. And so that's also an additional advantage of using this lens. But you can see this lens is um, perfectly positioned. The patient had an excellent result. And again, um, the sensor lens is just readily available um, and uh, you don't have to really worry about you know, I need this lens or that lens and uh, be, be very anxious about, oh, I can't do this surgery unless I have the CT Lucia lens. You can do the surgery with the Sensar lens, even in the Technus lens if and you're in a pinch. Uh, and again, only really made much more easy. And uh, in, my, in my opinion, more confidently, you can execute this technique with the externalization of the leading haptic and using the 25 gauge needle to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle while externalizing it. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.